stand tonight. Let's just invite the presence of the Lord. Pray for all those that are out. Uh, Sister Sandy, uh, Sister Pauline, Sister Smith, uh, Sister Mary. Brother Nick's got a procedure tomorrow. And uh, Sister Smith's got a procedure Friday. And uh, uh, pray for the Gregory's. They're out of town. And Sister Smith uh, went back and had to do surgery yesterday, a retake on her surgery. Brother Sister. Thomas said it was about, about the size of his hand, a blood clot, uh, in the work that they had done. And they found out that there was more cancer there that they uh, didn't address. So they addressed that. And she, would, my wife talked to her today for a good little while. But she is feeling better and doing better and very encouraged. So thank you for that great victory. We're leaving for a great report for these that are yes. having procedures this week. Amen. Let's pray for our church. There's a lot of things going on in the world today. There, there's unrest. There's uh, upheaval. There's, uh, I feel, a very special uh, need for us to pray for communication between the uh, leadership in the church, pastors, leaders, Sunday school teachers, people that stand accountable to God for anybody we need to be praying for yes amen. Uh, Paul said pray for me yeah amen that, that uh, I might have utterance of the gospel that, yes. that I might be able to speak clearly in a way that would bring forth fruit yes. for the kingdom and uh, that's a paraphrase but uh, let's just trust and believe the Lord that he's going to do a perfect work and us be a part of people that are I don't care if you're talking about churches splitting. I don't care if you're talking about good, dedicated people that love God. I talked to Brother Victor uh, yesterday, and he was already on his fourth time, I think, of stopping on the way to uh, a revival in Alabama. He wasn't the speaker, praise the Lord. But uh, he said he was going to have to stop two or three more times probably and add water to the car because it started leaking water. And I'm talking about unexpected things yeah. can happen yeah. in life. Right. And when these happen, <laughs> the Bible says, and one of the scriptures that I'll share with you tomorrow, sufficient unto the day. Yeah. Tomorrow yeah. is the evil thereof. Right. The madness, the the uh, wickedness that's that's in the age. And But I want you to know greater is he. Yes. Greater is he that's yes, in us sir. than he that is in the world. Amen? Yes. Amen. So just pray for me. I really desire your prayers that God will help me to say whatever I say with a, with a smile or a tear exactly what God wants me to say. Yeah. Uh, but I believe when we get to heaven and we see the urgency of the potential that we had, we all, including myself, would have prayed more. Yeah. Would have prayed more. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you and we're very encouraged in you, Lord, and we praise you. We just ask you to accomplish your will, Lord, in each of our hearts tonight. Help us, Lord, as we endeavor to uh, draw nearer to you and help others, God, to do the same. I pray, Lord, that you heal our bodies, our spirits, and our minds, God, and make us effective for you. God, every Oh, 
page 350 at the bottom.
164.
pistachio-colored clothes and flaming red ties. And, uh, of course, you know, it was uh, Herod who had uh, John the Baptist executed. He, he basically put him on the map, if you will, it, like on the front page of the newspaper. And for Billy Graham, uh, and I'm showing a contrast here between these two men and their times, uh, the, the most powerful newspaper man in the world back in the 1940s and 50s was William Randolph Hearst. And William Randolph Hearst owned the San Francisco Examiner. And he sent, I'm not gonna say spies to go check up on, on Billy Graham, but he sent investigators out because there were Hollywood people getting saved. You know, his early ministry, Billy Graham, was in Los Angeles, like 1948, 49, and, and uh, in Hollywood. And these Hollywood actors were getting saved. And William Randolph Hearst, uh, uh, that, that movie, <coughs> Citizen Kane, by the way, the real movie, was actually about him, about William Randolph Hearst, uh, even though that's kind of a non-issue. But the point I'm trying to make is that just as, just as God had, had allowed Herod Antipas uh, to make John the Baptist famous through his execution, we see William Randolph Hearst, the most powerful newspaper man on planet Earth, puts Billy Graham in all his papers back in 1948-49. He is the guy who made Billy Graham famous. There's absolutely no question about that. And he's, he's a very worldly guy, William Randolph Hearst. Uh, but anyway, you know, I just wanted to share that, that uh, there is a comparison, and the comparison is John the Baptist is the forerunner to Jesus Christ, his first coming, right? Billy the Baptist is the one who is leading the way for the introduction of the rapture in the second coming of Jesus Christ. There is a direct link. And that's in your lifetime. I wanted you to know. So we have 2,000 years ago, John the Baptist, and we have Billy the Baptist. And uh, But anyway, I just wanted you to know that because you are living in a very, very exciting time. So I praise God for that. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We're going to be singing the song, Going Home with Jesus. And I was talking to Brother Nick on the way to church tonight. And uh, I was talking about uh, a modern church misconception 
that we can live how we want, do what we want. My coworker talking about it today in the, in the truck, he's like, oh, I know you don't agree with this, but you know, I can drink and I can smoke and it's not a sin. And I know you don't agree with this, but the way I talk is not a sin because Jesus saved me and there's nothing I can do to stop it. And then he was talking about an old friend of his that, uh, that you know, he, he, was, he, he thought he was saved, but then he came out that he really wasn't because, you know, and when he came out that he wasn't, he really wasn't ever saved in, in the beginning. And I said, well, I said, we have very core disbeliefs in that, you know, we, we were going in two separate directions in that argument, and there's really no way to, to fix that one because you're going to believe how you're going to believe, and I can say whatever I want, and you're going to stay that way, and I'm going to believe how I'm going to believe, you can say whatever you want, and I'm going to stay that way. And so we just stopped the conversation, but the modern church says that you can live how you want, and right. Jesus is a God of mercy and a God of love, and he would never, because you're one of his children, he would never send you to hell. And uh, I was talking to Brother Nick, and I said, uh, I don't believe there's revival right. down uh, a couple weeks ago. And he, he pulled me aside. He said, Andrew, he said, die with Christ. Because if you don't die with him in the crucifixion, you will not rise with him in the resurrection. That's a fact. Amen. And right. we must crucify the flesh. Because if we don't crucify the flesh, we won't rise in the spirit. And Philippians, you know, I think 3.10, it says, that I may know him yes. and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. And uh, I want to know Jesus. Amen. If it takes, you know, if it, if it takes the glory of his resurrection, resurrection, I want it. If it takes the fellowship of his suffering, I want it. And I want to know Jesus. I want to know who Jesus is. I want to have that relationship, not just know who he is as a as a person, but actually to know him. And because uh, I want to hear when he calls me, I want to be going home. Amen. And uh, when, when he gives that bid and says, hey, it's time to go. Amen. I want to be listening. Right. I want to be listening Amen. to that trumpet. So if you guys know the song, just sing with me tonight.
faithful, amen, and I think the the urgent need of the people of God today right. is to walk with the Lord, Yes, sir. to meditate upon the Lord, to ask often what would Jesus do, right. what would Jesus think, what would Jesus, how would he act, and uh, what would it take for me to please him yes, sir. and for him to use me in a greater way than he's used yeah. me in the past. Yeah. And I want to say to you that uh, I still believe that God is using a lot of us a lot more than we're aware of. And I don't understand why I was so moved and affected the way I was Sunday. Uh, I mean, the singing was probably better than normal. I mean, worshiping and, and everything. But uh, it's like, it was like I felt that we're not getting it done. As far as looking at the world and looking at my family and looking at your family, and I know we can't do it. I, I know we can't do it. God is right. the only one that can do it. I know yeah. that. But I really do feel that urgency, uh, you know, that, that we testify about and we sing about, like, like uh, John the Baptist and everything. The Lord's about to come. Amen. The Lord's about to come. Amen. And I want your loved ones and my loved ones to be ready. Amen. 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 All right. Verse 3 of chapter 22 of Psalms. The book of Psalms. It says, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Right. O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. I was looking today, and in the book of uh, Psalms, the 150th division of the psalm, in, I believe it was six verses there, the word praise was mentioned 13 times. Praise. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in the midst of his firmament. Praise him in the midst of his fire. Uh, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Let us be praising the Lord, because... He inhabits the praises of Israel and his people. Amen? And uh, we need him, amen, to inhabit us and to fill us. And we need to feel, F-E-E-L, him in his glory and likeness in our life. Amen. Father, we love you tonight. And we thank you so much for already sensing your prayers and your, I mean, your presence, Lord, and feeling you in our prayers. And we thank you for that. I ask you tonight, Lord, that you would take your liberty and draw us nearer to you. Help us to be faithful, God, and be doers and, and uh, not just hearers, Lord, but be uh, able, God, to accomplish your will through yieldedness, obedience, God, and trusting faith. We praise you for what you've done, doing, and going to do in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, what we need more of probably than anything else is the presence of God. The presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord. He inhabits the praises of Israel. 
if we'll get his presence, amen, in our life to where his presence is realized. I know it's a faith walk. I know that a lot of times you don't feel the Lord. John the Baptist probably didn't feel very spiritual when Herod sent for him and had him beheaded. You know, uh, you know to please Herodias there, he didn't probably feel very spiritual. That's uh, right. Peter didn't probably feel very spiritual when he said, my phone's tight and everything I'm saying and it's messing my notes up. <laughs> all right, so uh, it's going to be all right. I got plenty more notes over here. I got four pages over here and about two or three over here with you. And I want to do it quickly. Amen? Amen. Uh, to where you can go get you some rest. But uh, uh, in 22 and 1, David said, the Psalm of David, it said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And there's a lot of people that has read that scripture. And they thought that. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Without digging in or knowing that the 22nd Psalm, I can't remember the theological name of it, but uh, it's like um, it, it has to do with Christ. It's for doing or uh, uh, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It's one thing for David to feel forsaken. It's one thing for you and I in the day and hour that we're living in to feel forsaken. But can you imagine the Lord Jesus Christ, the creator of the ends of the earth, the one that spoke it all. He flung the stars into existence and for him to feel forsaken by a father who he had never spent a second in his life before that they had not been together. Yeah. But he cried unto God the Father, why are you forsaken me? Why, when I need you the most, are you letting me down? But it was a price that had to be paid. Amen. That I believe at that moment, the fleshly part of Jesus didn't understand what God the Father was doing. Amen. At that moment, it sounds good when we say, But thou art holy, and O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel, and everything's going good and fine in my life, and in your life, and in our life. But what about the world? What about the lost? Do we realize, amen, that uh, one commentator said this was probably the saddest utterance of all Scripture. Amen. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Yeah. Nobody had ever given more. Nobody had ever done more for humanity. Right. Nobody had ever paid more for humanity. Yeah. Yeah. Nor they, will they ever. And yet he felt forsaken. And yet the devil convinces us many times that we're forsaken by the Lord, the one that loves us the most, the one yes, that held back not even the love that he had for his own son, that you and I might have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah, Why would God leave his own son at such a time, amen, as his son needed him so much? Because it was part of the price that had to be paid. Amen. God right. cannot look upon sin without judging it. Amen. God is, we're going in, amen, at this point, when Jesus is there, we're going into the dispensation of grace, a new time, a new era. God's doing a new work. Amen. But he's doing a new work, and he said, Thou will show me the path of life in thy presence is fullness of joy. Right. Amen. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Yes, sir. Amen. We need to realize that Jesus didn't come, amen, to nullify and do away with the law, but he came God man. He's the only one. Amen. He says, preserve me, O God. Psalm 16, preserve me, O God. Amen. For indeed do I trust. Yes, sir. John 16 and 23 says, for in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily I say unto you, whosoever, uh, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto ye have asked me nothing. Amen. Ask in my name. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. Yes, what do we sir. need? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, yes, gentleness, that's right. goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. We need all the fruits of the Spirit. Yes, we sir. need God abiding in us. God doing it for His glory. Yes. Amen. Not us doing it, trying to kind of be a close resemblance to what God right. wants to be. Yes. Not us reading the Bible and us figuring it out and saying, well, if I can just pat 
amen, to let the Father do it through us. Yes, amen. He said, it's expedient for you, amen, that I go away. It's expedient for you that it happened like this because the Comforter's got him coming to you in his presence. We, we look, and I've got so many notes, uh, but I'm just going to kind of stick with these right here for right now. There's a few things I would like to uh, share with this, but I felt like I was uh, uh, straggling a little bit. Uh, but anyway, we go to Matthew chapter 5. We've got the Sermon on the Mount. Amen. Jesus, seeing the multitude, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And can you imagine Jesus going up and being set without praying? Without praying to the Father? Can you imagine Jesus doing anything without checking with the Father? He said, I can only speak that which I've heard from the Father. Right. I can only do that which I've seen from the Father. Yes, Amen. I have to be about my Father's business. Amen. Yeah. He goes down in the, uh, the, the Beatitudes there, the fifth chapters, the sixth chapter and seventh chapter of Matthew. He talks about the Beatitudes, the salt and light. Right. Christ came to fulfill the law. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets, but to fulfill in five
No, we got to do it God's way. Whatever the experience, whatever the relationship, whatever the <coughs> scenario, whatever the service, whatever the song, whatever the experience. For us to pray, we must have a relationship with God or be being desirous to do according to God's will. And John 14 and 13 says, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, he said, I will do it. Right. My, that, that's so big. That's, that's so promising. And yet we live with such little expectation. Uh, two different people I went to pray for this week. Two different people on two different occasions. And they were hesitant about whether they needed prayer or not. I want you to know you need prayer more than you need the best that the doctor can do. You say, well, I've tried prayer 37 times in the last six months or six years for the same thing, and the prayer has not been answered. It's not been answered maybe according to your or my understanding, right. but every time we go to God, we offer a praise and a prayer. Yeah. Amen. We offer worship and adoration. Yes, We're exalting right. Him, realizing that, amen, God is able to do it. He can do it at any moment. He can save the vilest of sinner. He can, he can You say, but I'm not in power. I'm not in control or in charge anymore. Somebody else is in charge of my life. Well, that somebody else is not going to stand before God for you in that day. Amen. Amen. We need to pray. Amen. Though prayer is often a lot of work at the beginning, it, it turns into rest and peace after we've been touched by the Lord Jesus, after God has, has rested in us. Amen. And given us peace. After Caleb uh, went to sleep that night and he saw the angels of God ascending and descending, he woke up and he was refreshed. Right. And he was in great peace okay. when he had been in great turmoil. Now, I don't know if he was in as much peace at that moment as Abraham was when he went into the tent that night. Right. Amen. Going to offer uh, Isaac the following day. And he came out the next morning and said, I am the lad or going yonder. And worship. Yeah. We're going to worship. Amen. Yes. We're going for me to be obedient right. to the will of the Father. Yeah. And I'm going to raise the knife. On that one that I've waited all these years for. And if God raises him up after killing him, yes, sir. amen, I'm going to rejoice and be glad. If God don't do it, God is somehow going to make my seed as the stars yes, sir. of heaven That's right. by faith. Abraham believed God yes. and he was counted unto him as righteousness. Yep. In Matthew 11 and 29, he says, take my yoke. You know, a yoke is something that, that implies work. A yoke is something usually for two or more people. A yoke is something, when we're yoked up with God, we can't be the leader. Andrew's testimony, we've got to let God do the leading. Why? Because God is the one that's dealing with the hearts and lives at night when we're sleeping and we get up in the morning and we pray for him. God's possibly already been working because he knew the prayer we was going to pray that morning. And God does all things well. Amen. God works in every way for his right. life. You say, Pastor, that's borderline uh, predestination. And that's this. Now, let me tell you, it's the perfect will of God being accomplished. But it requires faith. Take my yoke. That word for yoke is for two. My, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. A yoke don't sound like it's easy. And a burden sure don't sound light. But God tells us if we'll do it in obedience to him and his will. It will work. It will work for his glory. Amen? Amen. Amen. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. We need to be praying. We need to be believing while we're praying. None of us praise enough. Right. 
We really don't. Paul said men ought always to pray and not to faint. We ought to be praying. He says pray without ceasing. Amen. Uh, it, may not, it may not have been Paul that said men ought always to pray and not to faint, but it's in the book. Amen. Amen. We need to be praying and we need to be praying, believing. And in Mark 9, 23, Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible yes, to him that believeth. Right. Brother, I'm telling you, they were looking around and they were seeing the demonic hordes and the people coming and rushing and everything. And what happened? Jesus jerked up the situation and intervened and healed a man, the loved one, and undergirded him for his glory. Prayer. Prayer is moving mountains. When you think about it, God said, if we'll believe, God will move this mountain. Right. Well, that, that, that is an example of a great and an accessible power that we have in God. Yes. Power for our sons and our daughters. Power for our companions and our neighbors. Power for our bosses and our co-workers. Power for our lay people, brother. Power hey, for our workers and ministers. Power for our organization and denomination. Brother, I'm still praying for the Pentecostal Church of God. Amen. I'm not praying with the fervency. I'm not praying with the expectancy that I believe would be as pleasing to God if I were praying more fervently and more expectantly. I want you to know I'm praying because I know God can do it. Yes, sir. If we'll just let him. Yeah. Amen. If we'll just let him, God will do it. God will do it. Are you ready? Yes. Amen. To let God do it in your life. Are you ready to let God minister? Or are you just going to continue to be anxious? You know, when I began to read about this this morning, I almost didn't even look up, but Adam Clark had a, had a part that he said in there, and, and right at the beginning of that, verse 27 or wherever it was at there, he's talking about the scribes and the Pharisees and everything, and Adam Clark brought out how that the Pharisees, you've heard them say, fair I sees. You see, I'm fair I see. I see myself as fair. Do you, you know the Pharisees started out as an extremely religious sect, and their goal, amen, was to be more religious and more godly than the uh, Israeli Jews and the Jews that were going through the motions and through the form because they weren't walking as closely to the law as the Pharisees began to walk. Right. But what happened? They begin to add to and they begin to take and, and do it according to their understanding. And right. They begin to add different laws. And I can't remember, I didn't take the time to look up, but how many laws, 256 or however many are, that they've got that they've added? Yet God says for us to add, not nor take away. Yes, sir. That's right. What God says. We're to be holy men and women of God led by his spirit, working out our own salvation with fear and trembling, not walking in a form of godliness, denying God's power. Jude 1 24 says, Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence and glory and his presence with exceeding joy. Hebrews 13 and 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of his everlasting covenant, right. make you perfect in ever good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. Yes, through sir. Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We need to be doing it for God's glory. We need to be doing it for God's praise. Amen. Psalm 86 and 1 says, Bad on thou ear, O Lord. Hear me, for I am poor and needy. Bad on thou ear. One commentator said, I am so low and so weak that unless you stoop down to me, my voice doesn't seem to ever be able to reach you anymore. Right. Have you ever prayed and you felt poor and needy? You felt destitute and alone and without God. I want you to know that preacher that told me next time you feel that way, just curse God. He knew, I, he knew I'd take, give him a chance to explain, but it, it alarmed me. He said, you think God's going to see your errors and God's going to see your faults and your weaknesses and your shortcomings and God's not going to see your desire to be faithful to 
him. And he said, Brother Charlie, God is the one that gave you the desire to be faithful to him. God is the one that's working in us and through us. And it's all for his glory. But there's times that, like Andrew said, we must be afflicted with him. Right. We must suffer with him. Yes, sir. We Amen. must suffer with him. Soul to rejoice. Yes, amen. Amen. As a servant of the Lord. Right. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive. In Psalm Exodus, I'm sorry, Psalm 86 and 5. He said, Thou art ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon me. Or that call upon thee. Give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer. Yes, amen. And attend to the voice of my supplication. Amen. And here's where it took off, saying everything I was saying earlier. I guess that's a good time for me to close. And you've already heard it. <laughs> you say, praise the Lord. <laughs> I know. I know I can discern your heart sometimes. Okay. Uh, I'm taking a note right now. A mental note. Okay. Let's seek the Lord. Man. Whatever you need from God, it's five to eight. You know how long you need to stay and spend with the Lord. You know if you'll wait upon the Lord, God will minister to you. Yes, yeah. amen. But uh, uh, let's draw near to the Lord amen. and let's see what God will do for our hearts and lives in this evening. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Don't forget to pray for those that are weak and sickly and out of town and those that are going to be having uh, surgery this week. And, and please remember Sister Thomas and Sister Smith. And and uh, Sister Pauline and everyone else that's, that's going through a procedure. Sister Smith's got a procedure Friday. Yes. And uh, we need God. We need God. We need God to send forth laborers into the harvest. Sure. Laborers that I won't run off. Amen. Laborers that will be hearers and doers. And they will hunger and thirst with all of their hearts. Yes. Heart Amen. For more of God. Amen. Blessed is he who is not offended. Who is not offended. Yes. Amen. Find us a place to